and welcome, I'm Jade of Jaded Reader and today I'm doing both my June and my July wrap up. June and July I only read seven books which for some people is a lot for me it's a little lower especially in July I had high expectations for how my July was going to go it did not go I have a July vlog that pretty much sums up how that month went and I'm done with it done 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 I just want to get it done and over with I've said the word done like four times so I'm going to put them in ascending order so my least amount of stars all the way up to my five star reads first up I no longer have in physical copy because I DNF'd it and it is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. So I DNF'd Nevernight. Again in my vlog I go into this in more detail but I was triggered by the beginning of Nevernight. There is a hanging of a main character's family member and her trauma continues throughout the book. I wasn't able to handle it. Hangings uh, along with suicides which I did not have present in this book as far as I read up to which was about page 30 are two of my major triggers. So I was completely unable to finish this. It did kind of dull my month a little bit, but what I read of the writing style was completely my style. I really want to give Jay Kristoff another try, possibly read one of his other works, Nevernight. I ended up not giving a rating because I didn't read enough of it to rate it. I'll just say that the beginning was wow, amazing. The first two chapters to me were super cool, and then the incident happened and I was no longer able to focus on what seemed like a really compelling storyline. Zero stars, but not in a negative way. I just didn't rate it because I didn't read it. Next up, I slowly but surely read this book, and that was My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I started off this book with a very open mind, quickly closed my mind to it, and was like, I don't like this. I don't like what's happening. It was like an odd, goofy parody of a classic, and I just did not know what to do with it. A lot of people really, really enjoy this book. So this follows Lady Jane Grey. In this world, some humans are not fully human, but able to shape Shift. I understand that this is a much beloved book and this opinion is probably a very unpopular one. I didn't mean to not like this book. I found myself laughing at some of the jokes, but some of the jokes just, just seemed really bad. The parody style, for me, it just didn't always hit. To sum the story up really quickly, you have Lady Jane Grey. Lady Jane Grey loves reading. She also has a strong passion for research having to do with the humans in this book who can transform into animals, and she's somewhat of an expert. She is wed off by her cousin, the King Edward, to Lord Gifford, and they have not met before, but it is found out that Lord Gifford is one of the humans that change into animals. I really liked Edward's perspective. I found that he was the most refreshing and kind of like his storyline was kind of odd. Lady Jane's was, she was very sassy, very frustrated, all for good reason, but also just like it was too much of the same tone the entire way through. And I didn't care for Gifford's perspective. It seemed very dull and drab. I, I don't know. It was like the, the humor style for me was just completely off. This had a lot of like slapstick humor. Lord Gifford turns into a horse and there's like a lot of horse jokes and I just, I got tired of it real quick. So I did end up giving My Lady Jane 2.5 out of 5 stars. Please don't hate me. I'm sorry. I'm just being really honest. It wasn't the book for me. But overall just, I didn't really care about the characters and it didn't really set me up to care. It set me up to laugh and I laughed sometimes. Now we have a major jump in star ratings after those first two books because everything after that were four and five stars and everything in between. I have This Was Our Pact by Ryan Andrews. This is a graphic novel that was gifted to me for my graduation. It is absolutely gorgeous all the way through. Lots of pretty pastels and it was very whimsical, magical, definitely magical realism. The further you go in this book, the more magic you find and you just are enjoying the ride. This is about a a group of children. Their town has a tradition of lighting these lanterns and putting them in the river and on the autumn equinox all the lanterns sail down the river. The kids make a pact to cross this bridge where they aren't supposed to cross and follow the lanterns all the way to their end. They all have these 
these different spectacular ideas of where the lanterns end up. Ultimately, I would say a lot of the morals that came out of this are straightforward. It's about friendship, opening your mind to different possibilities, and ultimately kindness, even when you're pressured to be unkind. I found myself looking at the pages even when I was done reading, looking at little details. There's little tiny monsters and creatures in the background that sometimes are not even addressed. They're just there, and I just really had a lot of fun reading this book. So I ended up giving This Was Our Pack 4 out of 5 stars. After that, I have Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and good old Jay Kristoff, who did indeed ruin my month, but I know he didn't mean to. I loved Aurora Rising. At first, I was really hesitant and I really didn't care. Like, I was like, oh, this feels slow. This world has a lot to it. The jokes were hitting, but I didn't care about the people saying it. All of a sudden, there's a lot of things going on and you really do end up very much so caring about these characters. You get a lot of different perspectives. I think that there's about six perspectives and all of them were really great, added to the story. They meant something and I'm really compelled to read the next one. So this follows a group of cadets after they just finish at a military school called Aurora Academy. Tyler is one of our main characters and he's also the leader of the squad. So Tyler actually does not get his first pick despite being the top of his class because he is saving Aurora. He gets a distress call and she is in a cryogenic sleep. The action scenes in this book are out of this world, no pun intended. Aurora was a really cool badass character. There's telekinesis, there's aliens. I felt very confident in the world building this book and I cannot wait to read the next one and I need to know what's going on. I am ready to see what happens next. So Aurora Rising I ended up giving also a 4 out of 5 stars. Now this next book that I talk about I do mention in my Draconic Reads video so if you'd like more information go ahead and check that out. But I did read in the month of June A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent as the entire title by Marie Brennan. This is a really interesting book. I have never read about dragons in this perspective before. It is a science-based book. You have the woman Isabella Trent or Lady Trent and she is newly married to her husband. Her husband is a total sweetheart by the way. This is one of those arranged marriages where you're like I would have shipped that anyway. I really loved this book. The story picked up in a really slow natural way where you're getting to know the main character. It just felt good. I was just reading it very casually in June and I just got such good vibes from this book. Once the story takes off you end up with a mystery revolving around these mysterious things that are happening around their research camp and due to Lady Trent's knowledge of dragons she becomes incredibly useful and then she pushes her way to the top of this research team and becomes truly invaluable. I absolutely loved how she was written. She was a really analytical main character and I don't get a lot of that with my female main characters. I get feisty main characters, I get nice main characters, characters that are plain but beautiful. All of these different kind of characters you don't get as many decisive straightforward scientist type characters and I really really enjoyed how Lady Trent was written. This is not a book for everybody. This was definitely a book for me. If you are a Virgo or have a Virgo rising or Virgo moon I think you would enjoy this book quite a bit. If you don't know anything about zodiac signs just ignore that I said that but calling all Virgos this is a book for you. If you've watched The Mummy um it's kind of like if Evie the librarian was the main character of the expedition but instead of mummies it's dragons. It's a really good book. I had so much fun reading it and I ended up giving A Natural History of Dragons a memoir by Lady Trent a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Another graphic novel I read was Death Note. This is the black edition which contains both volumes 1 and 2. Uh, I do have the box set edition over there but this contains both of them so it made a lot of sense to hold this one up instead of two. Volume 1 I ended up giving 4.5 out of 5 stars. Volume 2 I ended up giving 5 stars. I really enjoyed this series. It's just incredible as a manga. I did pick this series up originally when I was much younger and then I saw the anime and I just forgot all about the manga. Teenage Jade didn't know what she was doing. This is amazing. I have so much nostalgia, so much excitement. There's little details and things that I just didn't catch during the anime or that maybe weren't in the anime that I'm catching in here and I'm just really enjoying myself. This follows the high schooler Light Yagami who has a mysterious notebook fall out of the sky. Once he opens the notebook he sees that it's called a death note and if he writes a person's name with a picture of them in his mind they will 
die of a heart attack or if he writes the way they die, they will die in that way. So Light decides to take it upon himself to rid the world of criminals. This is a very anti-hero, morally gray character perspective. You also have Ryuk who is in charge of the Death Note and kind of is a bit of our, not moral compass, but our rule book of how the Death Note works. He's constantly describing it. There's a list of rules in the Death Note. I absolutely love Ryuk. He's a death god. So here in the black edition, you do have some colored pages. This is the lovely Ryuk and Light Yagami. I actually named a cat that my best friend gave me when I was younger, Light Yagami, and he was adorable. Um, he wasn't a serial killer, but he was cute. And I'm just really enjoying reading this series. I can't wait to continue it on throughout the months. The last book on my list, and quite honestly, I have to admit my favorite out of both June and July, was A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer. So I buddy read this with Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe. It was such a fun buddy read, and I have to say, I was not expecting to love this as much as I did. This was gifted to me by Lexi at Alexander Roseland, but what initially made me pick this up was Evie Redding's video. Evie Redding has cerebral palsy, and while everyone's experiences is incredibly different, I really appreciated her review. She can give an in-depth review on cerebral palsy and the representation in this book. I don't have cerebral palsy. I would be a poor choice to know if the rep is sufficient. So I do have Evie Redding's video down below. I'm just going to talk about the storyline because Harper is like one of my favorite characters of all time. Anytime these characters were making choices, I would think in my head, why are they not doing this? And then Harper would do it. Harper is an amazing main character. She is a girl that lives in our world and she is transported to an alternate universe and kingdom called Emberfall. And due to the circumstances, that surround her kidnapping, it really kind of works. It makes sense. In this book, there's really not a lot of choices. Neither character necessarily wants Harper to be there. It's kind of just thrust upon both of them. And how this plot lays out, it completely just blew away my expectations. And I never saw the storyline happening the way it did. I was wary until I watched Evie Redding's video and I was really intrigued. But after reading it, I can do no more than sing its praise and say that this was a fantastic book and I am currently reading the arc A Heart So Fierce and Broken and it's just continuing that same magnificence. So start this series because it just gets better and better after page one. So that's it. That's my entire wrap up. I don't expect this to be very long apart from a few bumbling lines that I threw in here and there. I think that it was sufficiently conquered. Done. Check. I'm up to date with my wrap-ups. I'm currently in August and I'm really enjoying my August reads, so I'm expecting to have, even if it's a short month for books, a really great month for books. And I hope you're enjoying the sun or more stars wherever you are. Until next time, bye! Shh, Ima. <laughs> he almost said an Amy Kaufman. That's not true. This is just Jay. Jay, all by himself, uh, gave me an emotional month. This is such a weird book. I need to start over this review. I don't know how to review this book. Loves books, loves reading, which usually goes together. Hi, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see.